I have already decided to tell this story. When I met Suzanne Feldman at a science fiction convention after my first two novels, she asked what I was working on. I said, well, this one's not science fiction. Um, it's a historical thriller about the um, uh, Jewish underground near Genoa during the Nazi occupation. And Suzanne said, oh, you must meet my father. He was with a group of Jews who walked over the Alps with the army. And I went, oh, yeah, I must meet your father. For those of you who have read A Thread of Grace, Alfred Feldman's story forms the basis of Claudette Bloom's story. Both Alfred and his father survived the war. And afterwards, when it was safe to do so, he wrote down the names of the 33 people he knew, the names he knew, who conspired to feed and shelter him and his father for nearly two years. If you've read the book, do you remember when um, Santino is taking the train south and he is sitting next to this girl who later turns out to be a staffetta who worked for the underground, right? And uh, there's this boy who looks really scared. And she stands up and she makes an opera, right? And the boy drops down and he skitters underneath. That was Alfred. That was Alfred Fed Feldman who did that. So he had no idea. He told me the story. He says, I don't know what her name was. I never know. But she stood up and she, you know, she, she distracted them and I got away. So that, she doesn't count as one of the 33. That's why I say there's, well, there's more than 10 people who knew each one of these ones who were, who were saved. So in 1998, it became my privilege to return to Italy with Mr. Feldman and his wife and his two kids and daughter-in-law. We retraced his steps from the Alps to Genoa, and we tracked down every one of the 33 people whose names were on his list. Most had, of course, died many years earlier. But there was one lady up in a tiny village called Ritana who still lived in the same house. Alfred was a teenager during the war, and he remembered her as being an older woman with children. And it suddenly occurred to him that she was probably in her mid-20s. Right, but she was an older woman with children. When he knocked on her door, and he was in his late 70s when we went, um, this elderly woman came out, and she stared at him. And he said, Signora, do you remember me? And she went, oh, Alfred. And then she immediately called for her great-granddaughter. She was probably, you know, it was after school, and she was probably babysitting for the girl. And she said, come here, come here, come here. This is Alfred. Remember how I told you about Alfred and the cave and the Germans? And the... Alfred and his father are part of the history of this village now. And what that old woman said was, oh, Alfred. We were so frightened for you, for you, for Alfred and his father. What do you do with that kind of bravery? When I asked people like her where they found the courage to take those kinds of risks for strangers, I heard the same word over and over, niente, eh, it was nothing, niente. Over and over, these acts of bravery were dismissed. I only did what anyone would do. Or, um, uh, anyone with a shred of compassion would have done the same thing. Or, I was in a position to help, so naturally I did. Niento. It was nothing. But it wasn't nothing. The ashes of six and a quarter million Jews, the scarred bodies and souls of millions of others, a witness to the fact that what happened in Italy was extraordinary. Those Italian rescuers themselves do not as see it as heroic, as one of them asked me with chilling justification, how could anyone have done differently? That's a question for others to answer. What happened in Germany, Austria, Poland, and France is not the whole story of the Holocaust. Without knowledge of Italy, any attempt to understand the Holocaust is stunted at best, crippled at worst. What elderly Italians today shrug off as nothing or what anyone would have done is in fact a challenge and a rebuke to all of those who could have helped but didn't. It is my greatest hope that a thread of grace will do its part to make this remarkable story better known and that it will challenge its readers to act on an Italian conviction. If you can help, you must help, no matter what. Thank you. <laughs>